I'm Pat McCarry and we are live in the Joe headquarters. And I'm Jason Hennessy and this is the Rugby Joe Six Nations Corner. Right, so Pat, we'll kick things off obviously with Ireland versus Wales. I'm going to start straight away and say I am happy to eat my, my recent oh, words. Yes. I thought Wales were going to give us a good game. Mm. I think a lot of people did with Gatlin, but... I mean, that game was over after 20 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was really, like, surprised me as well. Like, I thought it was going to be a lot closer. Um, this Ireland team, I just loved the way they come out and just go after teams for the first 10, 15 minutes, and they did so again. And um, just, like, uh, the whole talk would have been the night before, quiet and the crowd down. Mm. Like, Andy Farrell had talked about kind of keeping the roof closed. He doesn't care about the atmosphere. Like, you know, and the whole thing would have been qu keep that crowd quiet. And they did it. Like, it, it was... Uh, nearly every, at the moment everything they're doing is, is going to plan and, and everything Farrell is saying is working so really impressive yeah. yeah they just look fearless really don't they they came straight out of that game and they just like they, they weren't going to take a backward step mm. and like there's a lot of pressure going into your first into the first game of the championship the fact that as, as we said that Gatlin was there like playing the principality isn't easy I know there was a, an intercept try for the third one but like those first two tries they were well worked tries there was mm. there was phase play there was good speed good speed of rock good, I mean it was just fantastic wasn't it yeah it's like it's, it's almost like at, at the moment what they're doing is everything they're mapping out is like you know these first five plays you're going to go here you're going to take this line and it's like they're so confident that they're, every player is going to be doing their job that it's actually, it's almost like it's been scripted and it's worked out perfectly for mm. them. And the confidence that must give them is incredible, yeah. Yeah. Do you think now the fact, okay, we said at the start because of the fact that the Welsh game could have been a slippery slope. I know it's France up next and I know France, like, I know we're ranked number one in the world, but mm. like a lot of people would say France are the form team in the world at the moment. Like they didn't lose a single game in the calendar year last mm. year. Do you reckon like we're in pole position now for a grand slam yeah it's interesting because like i suppose the week that's in it you sometimes read the opposition press and you see what's going on and i was on rugby rama and they were talking about uh it's just interesting to see that like they were saying i think they said if if it rains in ireland it, they said they'll only have a 15 percent chance of winning and if it doesn't rain they'll have a 40 percent chance of winning and i was almost offended kind of thinking like who do you think is playing peter Clossy and the boys <laughs> like i mean those <laughs> days are gone we're not sticking it up the jumper like and then like so i was surprised when i was getting myself offended you know on ireland's behalf ahead of the game and then one of the lads niall that we're working with just kind of said jesus that's strange to think that they're only giving themselves a 40 percent chance of winning and he was like what, do france consider ireland the favorites and it's like yeah because we have the home game even though andy farrell hasn't beaten france i mm. kind of think we have the edge going into this game that's the way everybody is looking at it anyway what, yeah. what would you think i don't know i mean you, like i suppose i really really hoped to have furlong back for this game if mm. i'm honest with you do yeah. you know what i mean they have a very very strong front or a very strong pack not to say Beelham didn't have a good game mm. but no matter what way you look at it ty furlong is the best yeah tight head prop in the world mm. so missing him i was i thought like kudos to murray murray had an excellent game yeah and a lot of people were kind of doubting him the fact that some people are saying he might not have even been in the Ireland squad because he was left out of the Munster yeah, Championship yeah. squad recently enough. So for him to be like on the bench for Munster, then all of a sudden come straight in to starting a Six Nations match against Wales and to play as well as he plays, mm. I think, yeah, he's going to be our Le General on, on, uh, on Saturday. Yeah. But after seeing France against Italy, to be honest with you, I would be leaning towards the fact that I think Ireland were much, much better. And the fact that we're at home, 50-odd thousand Irish people cheering them on, I can't see past an Irish win. Yeah, it's like even like France are almost like a team that are not playing great but getting results at the moment, mm. which, is, which is always a good thing for a team as well. Like, but they didn't play that. Like, they were lucky enough against uh, Australia. Like, as yeah. Penno got them out of jail. Like, and I remember O'Gara talking about that. Like, one piece of magic saved them losing. Uh, they were, you know, fortunate enough again with Tommaso Allen. Like the, the kicks, the, the penalties are pretty poor for Italy. They should, they probably will walk away thinking they should have won that. But it, interesting to go back to Conor Murray there, like talking about him. Like a lot of people have always said, yeah, Conor Murray can't play this fast tempo style mm. of game. But you saw him at the weekend. Well, like, he's, it's just like if he is a pack that's going forward and everything is clicking, and if his coach wants him to play that way, he can. Like, cause it's, mm. I think his thing is like always the last maybe three or four years. He's always just because him and Sexton almost kind of game nine and ten together like he's just seen as like as old as Sexton even though he's got like three or four years on Sexton mm. but like Murray's often looked upon as like yeah the veteran as well but like he is th maybe 33 years old he's like, 33 he's, 34 yeah. he's got a little bit of life in him yet like mm. so uh, it was great to see him I just love him like because I think he's just been such a class player over the years and like you saw back in 2021 before that Lions tour like if he could do it like if he needs to like you know like and, mm. and like you've seen him he finished that 2021 season in, in great form Remember, came up to like uh, even though I think Munster lost, came up to the RDS, had a great game, 
scored a try as well like that. So and he was just telling I knew myself I needed to take the ball on more and snipe a bit more and take a few more carries as well. So he is capable of it. So I'm mm. delighted to see him back and getting the start. Now, saying that, I probably still would have went Jemison Gibson Park if he had been fit, but mm. uh, yeah, delighted to see him back there and kind of, uh, you know, proving a few more people wrong again. Yeah. Do you see any unforced changes there? Like, I mean, we know, like, the three guys are out, like, but do you think, I mean, the only way you can, the one you could look at, which was a big toss up last week, was whether or not you start Aki or Kluski. Mm. I thought McCluskey was brilliant. And yeah. to be honest with you, I'd go with Kluski again. Yeah. But maybe he might look to use Aki in his power game up against the French. I don't know. What do you think? Would you would you stick to? I think stick it's the formula. Yeah, I think they're they're gonna stick with it. Like the only one, like it seemed like a mad enough theory at the time, but like, yeah, I'd see McCluskey starting again. Like I think Shane Horgan was really talking him up, saying he had the, probably the standout Irish player of the first half. Um, I suppose the other one was just the talk of like everyone's gonna confirm that it's the size of this French pack as well. Mm. Like so. Some people are even like I know Lindsay Pete used to talk, spoke about like uh, bringing in Gavin Coombs for his size as well. But yeah. Uh, they're, they're even is talking about moving Tyg Byrne back to six to bring in someone like Ian Henderson as well. Like so, like that's maybe the only option I could see. But otherwise, mm. I don't know. I think like, they're going to go unchanged. I think, so. I, think. I think so. I think so. Will we have a look? So before we move on to the other games, will we have a look at our combined XV? So mm. just for our viewers now, just to clear this up, it's it's very difficult to do this when you're looking at the two whole squads. So the best way to do it is what we did is we took the French starting lineup from the weekend and the Irish starting lineup from the weekend and we're doing a combined XV based on that. So no one's not shouting around, where's Tyg Furlong? Tyg uh, Furlong's injured, wasn't playing the weekend. So we're going off those team sheets. So I'm going to go first, right? I'm going to okay, go first. Go for I, have you go first. Now, I have it on my phone here and I'm just going to uh, try not to change any decisions. But So we're starting first with um, loose head Andrew Porter or Cyril Boy. That is a tough toss-up. And my Irish head is kind of saying Porter, but I think Cyril Boy is just that little bit better than him, mm -hmm. and I think he edges it for me. Uh, I, this is this is a big one, Marchin or Dan Sheen. There's a an argument out there that Marchin is the best hooker in the world alongside someone like Malcolm Marks. But the way Dan Sheen's playing at the moment, there's an argument that he's the form hooker in the mm -hmm. world. So, just to make things a little bit fair, I'm going to go <laughs> with Dan Sheen there, um, because I went with Cyril Boy for the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, Tight heads, you've got uh, Antonio and Bielan. To be honest with you, Antonio the weekend, he's after losing a bit, he's after losing a good bit of weight. Yeah. Probably one of France's best players. I'm going to go with Antonio over Bielan. Yeah. Now, if Furlong was there, I'd have Furlong in there all day long. But that's what I'm going to go with there. Um, second row, Flamente or Byrne. I have to go with Byrne. He's in the bloody world dream team of the year. Uh, Flamente is a great player, young second yeah. row, but I'm going with Ty Byrne there. Uh, Willem or James Ryan. I'm going based on the weekend. I think Willem was poor the weekend, and James Ryan had one of his best games in Norwich Jersey in a long time. So I'm going to go with James Ryan in there. Uh, now, I'm going to be a bit controversial in the back row and I'm going to switch things around a bit. Mm -hmm. So obviously we had Jalonch and Peter Manny at six the weekend and then we had Olivion and Van der Fleer and Aldrit and Doris. Now, I can't keep Aldrit out of the squad, mm -hmm. but I also can't keep Doris out of the squad. So I'm going to switch Doris to six. Obviously, World Player of the Year, Van der Fleer at seven and then Doris at eight. Um, nine, I'm sorry, Connor, like it's <laughs> Antoine Dupont. <laughs> This one, like, everyone's going to have their own, their own opinions on this and might agree or disagree with me. Entomac or Sexton? I think currently, if you take off your Irish hat, you're going to go with Entomac. I think Sexton is so pivotal to us, but if you were to pick as a, an outsider, like a neutral, yeah, so who do you want thing, as your 10 at the moment? Do you want a 37-year-old Johnny Sexton or 38-year-old, whatever it is, sorry, Johnny, if I'm giving you an extra year? Um, I'm going to have Entomac in there alongside DuPont. Mm -hmm. um, the wing, uh, the young guy Dumortier that played the weekend, good player, but James Lowe was class again. So yeah. I've got James Lowe on the left wing. Um, okay, I'm going to cheat again in this in the centres. As good as McCluskey was the weekend, I'm going to switch Fiku to 12 and put Fiku alongside Ringrose. So I'm sorry, I have to leave McCluskey out. Um, Penno over Hansen. I'm sorry, I love Mac Hansen as we already know. But Penno's absolutely class. Mm. He has to go in there. The Keenan and Ramos one is another massive debate, but especially after the weekend again you have to put Hugh Keane in there mm -hmm. as good as Ramos is Ramos is class but and French people might completely disagree with me in other countries but that is my Ireland and France combined 15 ok yeah I was just, go for a pass as you were going along there yeah I was just putting the X's down for anything we disagreed on um, and there's only three now <sighs> and maybe again you've gone in recent form I have Willems uh, starting again just the size of the, the bugger yeah, like, ok yeah, like, yeah. fair enough so fair I have enough. him in there for James That's Ryan um, he's almost a player that like he's just so inf like I just remember last year's game over in Paris and the guy was an absolute monster like so I have him in there ahead of Ryan uh, I've gone maybe again as you're maybe 
there's that funny thing. Sometimes we kind of slag South African fans that they always have pick a world X, XV and there's like yeah, yeah. 11 of their players. Like, so I might have been guilty with that, but I have Sexton. Uh, I have Sexton ahead of Entomac. Yeah, It's a close call. It's the same as the Williams or I went. Like, there is some very tight calls there, which is you've got the two best foreign teams in the world at the moment. Yeah. So. And then the only other one then I have is... Um, yeah, I actually prefer what you've done there. You have uh, you've you've teamed up like Fafana or Fiku, I should say, and yeah. Ringrose. I had just McCluskey and Ringrose. Together. I know. I, I, yeah. I like. I see. I, I was trying to be a bit more fair. I mean, I'd love to have Kluski in there, and the way he's playing at the moment. Yeah. But like you know yourself over the years, how pivotal and how important a player Gail Fiku is for France and for is it Racing he's right now, isn't it? And he's yeah. Loose and stuff. But he is just. I mean, if you'd Fiku and Ringrose alongside each other, oh my God, they'd do some serious <laughs> damage. I think we, what we should do is even yeah. We'll agree on that. I think we'll agree on maybe the midfield. I, I did the same thing as you. I put Aldred at six as well. Yeah, you, can, you can't. You can't. Like you can't leave Doris or Aldred out. You just can't. Yeah, yeah. And that's unfair on Peter Manny, but like yeah. these boys are. It's um, a world class. So we'll do that and then maybe even just throw it out on Rugby Joe and they kind of let you guys have a debate and tell us what we got right or what we got wrong as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, we'll move on so to oh, big, big, big game over the weekend. Um, Calcutta Cup clash Scotland England so Scotland have now beaten England the last three Six Nations in a row oh, I'll yeah. repeat that again the last <laughs> three Six Nations I mean England I'm sorry look I know they've got a big transitionary period at the moment a lot of new coaches coming in a lot of missing some players young guys called up but they looked toothless for a lot of that game really didn't they yeah, they were, it's just strange again. Like you just, I suppose that's the, the shame for Bort because you think that you know he would come in and everything would immediately change. Like you'd hear about him kind of like making things simple again, and but you can like you can only see in midweek there that like Alad Walters and Richard Wigglesworth are coming in yeah. in the summer. Cockrell's gone off to Montpellier as well, so like he still is only kind of getting his foot in under the, the mm. you know in the door and his knees under the table. Like so, but yeah, I, I kind of expected England to be better still. Like. Um, yeah. You know, kind of just surprisingly flat again, and like a couple of moments of magic now from Scotland. I was about to say the one yeah. thing you can't like not taking away this from the Scottish fans, the quality of the Scottish tries, yeah. just like individual brilliance from Duha and Brenda Murver, probably one of the best individual tries. Now, question marks maybe over the defence, but I'm sorry, you tackle him, you try tackling him in that situation because people will point fingers and say should have made that tackle. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to say that when you're sitting on your couch eating popcorn, and do you know what I mean? Swamping down a few cans or whatever it is like, but he was everything about that try was just it was like Jonah Lomu reincarnated yeah. with a big blonde head, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> essentially, wasn't it? Yeah, I oh, know it was just like to sit back and watch it. Like it's almost like you know these moments where the well the famous one the the Leonardo DiCaprio one from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where yeah. it's like it's like you're sitting back and you're watching it and you're seeing something amazing that was about to happen and you were like. Oh, and it's like you're sitting forward oh, he's not going to beat another one he's not going to yeah. beat another one and it was just incredible it was like the very it. last one the last push off you're like oh he's surely caught here and it's just he actually used I can't remember who the last person to tackle was, was, was the it, Dan, man, it was yeah. it was Dan yeah. Brown. he actually used Dan Brown's, um momentum against yes, him yeah, and yeah. kind of sprang off him yeah. I thought that was last but what do you think of the whole uh, little Finn Russell incident he, oh, I yes. saw him he was speaking uh, I don't know where he was he's doing an interview recently like, and he addressed it and stuff and apparently it was actually two other players that were that were um, kind of like giving him a bit of shit hosiery yeah, in, yeah. The, in the rock and he thought it was Farrell so he got up and chased Farrell yeah, and apparently yeah. Farrell was like what are you talking about like, but I mean what do you think I mean do you, do you agree with that kind of shit hosiery like I mean is that good crack or is, oh, that, like, against, is that against the, the class of the game the values of the game no I loved it yeah yeah it's just kind of just it's, it's, it's like someone spotting something like that and yeah you know they all talk crap to each other I'm sure Owen Farrell is like He's, he's now like a lamb himself. Like no. He's given it out plenty of times in the past. You, you'd see him and he's given it out physically and he's given it out verbally as well. Like So I'm sure he'll know himself. He has to kind of take a little bit of that stuff. But that's again why in a weird way, like that, that's why people love white chocolate. Like They love the yeah. kind of like the sassy yeah. games and, and that he brings that kind of personality of himself to the game. So yeah, more of that, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, based on that game, Pat, like, we have to go over to, to Murrayfield, over yeah. to Edinburgh yeah. to play yeah. Scotland. It, it, like... I, I, I was guilty enough of saying this only last week that I thought like oh yeah it would be a walk in the park Yeah. but after seeing their performance the weekend I think uh, the, because especially the fact that you have to go over to Edinburgh Yeah. what do you think like could they overturn us it's a funny like cause it's like I think this is Gregor Towns' final like look, looking like his final Six Nations with Scotland as well like mm. so um, and they always talk the talk as well like I think the whole thing that would give Ireland hope is that Scotland just always seem to have one big performance in them in the Six Nations and, and you true. hope that this is it. Because like, it happened last year, you know, they beat England as well and everybody was celebrating, is this going to be it? And they just fell apart again. Like, so um, Ireland just, 
there's just so much a better team than England at the moment. So you would have faith in them as well. Like injuries don't kind of hobble us too much. Like, but then we do have that strength and depth. Yeah, like I wouldn't. I wouldn't be as confident of kind of like writing. Like, let's say if at the weekend, if we're lucky enough to beat France or uh, everything goes well. Yeah, I wouldn't be giving us a grand slam yet. I suppose is all I'd say no. about that. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Looking at England, like, would you be worried? Like, would you think that okay, this was just tough first game? Scotland, I know the fact it was in Twickenham, I suppose, makes it a little bit worse. But you know, Scotland run form, scored some good tries. Mm. It's going, as you said, it's going to take time for them to get their shit together. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But uh, would you fear for them against like a Wales, or would you fear for them against? Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, do you think they're going to get a couple of results, or do you think they could be down the bottom, bottom? Yeah, like another like fifth place finish or something like that. Yeah. It's just it's strange to kind of look at that team and those players and like the, like where's the fear factor anymore? Kind of when you look at England as well and like yeah, like they still have like great players. Like yeah, like a totally is it England Wales this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. England yeah. Wales. I mean, like who are you who are you picking there? Like there's two teams who both need the results. Two new coaching setups in there, and it, it's a it's a big game when the two of them play each other. Yeah, it's a big game when they play each other. So. It's it's like, the, the, and then the other one is like everyone's kind of getting distracted by the whole, you know, uh, Farrell and Smith should they team up together? So mm. there's other factors like you know all over the pitch that mm. they kind of need to get said as well. Like and uh, you know some people are I, there was a funny one like I see some people are just like saying it's almost like the Gerrard I think it was even getting discussed as well like Gerrard and uh, Lampard can they play together as well like can these two lads play together as well? It was interesting to see you see Sonny Bill Williams was interacting with somebody at the weekend. They were criticising Smith for going no, for... No, we got it wrong, Pat. We're mixing line. it up. It's Scotland Wales Wales this weekend. against each other. It's Scotland Wales. Apologies. It's <laughs> Scotland Wales this weekend, Italy. We really should know that, but there's a lot of rugby to cover, right, lads? Um, Scotland Wales. So, like, Scotland Wales at home, lads. I'm, fans, I'm back in Scotland that game anyway, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, and that, that, there we go. Like, yeah, we're talking about Scotland. Like, and only having one big performance in every Six Nations as well. But if they can go, if they manage to beat Wales as well, then... Because, like, the Six Nations is all about momentum. Like, if, like, that's just what to say. Like, that's yeah. the key word, momentum. If they yeah. beat Wales then all of a sudden like their dander's up big time yeah yeah like so uh, but that's and then the big thing is like they'll all be watching Duhan van der Meer and like I think England were a bit the same as Wales I like, expected Wales to be better as well at the weekend and just mm. kind of looked a bit flat so um, but you know it's an interesting one I think like for me personally like I don't really I think Smith and, and Farrell could still work it's good. They, they need the rest of the team to click around mm. them mm. but I still am always surprised when Tuolagi is fit just what to say would you team. bring Tuolagi back in I would yeah, yeah. like I, I don't know what you do. Like I, I still think maybe you could still go with Smith and see how Smith and Tui Lagi goes as well. Like I wouldn't drop Smith to be honest. With you. Like I mean, I think Smith is the future of English rugby. Like he's an absolute maverick. Like I mean, yeah. his form has probably been up and down recently. Like but he's still very young, and I still think if you have Marcus Smith in form, he can just turn a game in a moment of magic. Like yeah. So I, I don't, I don't think you can drop someone like him. I don't think you can. Yeah, and then just be fair with him. Give him a real go forward twelve as well to kind of play alongside. Mm. And then I see Slade is back fit again. Like so. If you can, if, if maybe just team them up again, like uh, I know Marchant is kind of getting a good few games as well for England, but I, I kind of I still like maybe I'm hung up on the World Cup, which is mm. a good few years ago now at this stage, but I still like that two Alagi uh, Slade combination in the midfield, and then yeah, give Smith like a decent midfield to work with and see how he gets yeah, on. Yeah, so you're dr you're dropping Farrell so and putting he's him on dropped. the bench. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's on the bench, and like maybe th the thing about Farrell is. God. He's a bit like, weird enough, like Wayne Rooney in a way. Like, you know, it's like he's still young enough, but he's been around for years. He's got a lot of mm. miles on the clock as well. Like, so, you know, maybe could he kind of have that role that the likes of Conor Murray and even Keith Earls yeah. are having for Ireland now that he's this guy who comes on for the final 30 minutes and has an impact as well. Like, thing, so. look, and like, the, 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 as we've seen, and it's become so, so important in rugby now, it is very much a 23-man game. Yeah. Every game, especially at test level. Your bench is almost as important as your starting 15. Mm -hmm, yeah. You need to have good guys. And someone like Owen Farrell to come off the bench Absolutely sensational. So, so you're saying so? It's like if you're dropping him, do you think Botrick made a bad decision by keeping him on as captain? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and now it's going to be, like that's the big thing as well. Like I'm trying to, going back to football sometimes as I often do as well. I'm just thinking about Aston Villa and you're an Aston Villa supporter as well for your sins. For like, my sins. But I was thinking about like when Gerrard dropped her own Mings yeah. uh, at the start of the season and like that created just a storm out of nowhere. Mm. It's like, why don't you just start playing, you know, like just gently do it. Like, you know, like, yeah. but now all of a sudden he's, Put his chips in behind him. Farrell's the captain again, and now it's going to be a big deal if he gets dropped yeah. as well. Like, so he's I'm surprised. I thought he would put someone like Engine as captain, like, and because yeah, he Genge, had enough yeah. to do it. If you want to do it before the World Cup, I mean, if he drops Farrell as captain now, like, tr like in the middle or after the Six Nations, and then you've got a new captain going into the World Cup, mm. now was your chance to go right. So clean slate, new captain for the Six Nations, who's going to lead us into the World Cup? Yeah. So maybe that's probably a bad decision. But look, come here, who are we? Like, we're Steve Bostrick is a highly experienced coach, and he knows mm. what he's doing. Maybe he will drop him as captain. 
and, I'm, and he's only going to do it slowly. Or I you, I mean, you could do what kind of uh, an old Irish trick would be uh, just name him in the team and then day of the game he tweaks something and all of a sudden he's <laughs> on the bench or he's out of the squad or something like that. And, and it's not a story and you get on without him or something like that. So, um, but yeah, an interesting kind of way to go. Like, But yeah, like, do you, I, I was going to say they'll get back on track against Italy at the weekend. Who knows? Because they've been pretty impressive, Italy, haven't what, they? What do you like? think? Yeah, Italy against France the weekend. I was very impressed. I mean, look, I know they were playing at home, like, but like, that came down to the very last play of the game. Yeah, yeah. This is an unbeaten France team that are favourites of the World Cup mm. who are defending a Grand Slam yeah. against little old Italy. And <laughs> they nearly beat them. Yeah. Like, and, and to be honest with you, two of the tries that France scored were kind of laps in concentration in Italy early on in the game, something that caught them. So like, if you're to be fair and look back on that game as a whole, Italy probably should have won that game. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. W- they won't get a better chance. They'll be absolutely mm. kicking themselves. They nearly beat France, and if they had, had done that, but like, does that does that mean now? Or Italy now is was that their big moment now? And are Italy just going to be shh after this? Mm. Or do you fancy Italy to get like a win or even two wins? Of, like of all the teams to come up against, yeah, maybe England next is a good one for them. Like now they wouldn't have looked at that originally. If you imagine getting started off with like France and England in your first few games, you'd be cursing yourself. Mm. But now it's like they'll be going in thinking this England team can be got at as well. But I kind of do figure that like they might get one win out of the whole thing. Like Wales mm. are in such bad state that they could Poor beat the Wales. Welsh again. <laughs> well, if they can beat Wales in Cardiff, I'm sure they can beat them in Rome. <laughs> yeah, like they'll fancy that. Like I, I kind of fancy Ireland to kind of take them apart uh, when they come up against them, even though mm. it's away again. But yeah, um, I yeah. think Ireland will have too much for Italy. I think. Or yeah. I'm, I'm not, I hope I'm not cursing us now by saying that, but I think they will have too much for them. But mm-hmm. I mean, look, they can, they can always like we don't know what Scotland team shows up when they play. So yeah. like maybe Italy will fancy themselves for a scalp against Scotland and went fancy a scalp against Wales. Yeah. I look come here with the way that Italian team played the weekend, they should be going in and then fancying the scalp against England. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I think and it wouldn't just be brilliant for the tournament to see yeah. them because they got their big scalp against Wales last year. Imagine they went away and beat England. Just Jesus, it's on in Twickenham yeah. in the weekend as well. Like so imagine they went away and did that. They'd be fucking chaos. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be chaos. Um, I but was actually lo- looking back, I was just looking to the, the Ireland game then at the weekend. I was going to ask you this as well. Okay. There's so many players you can name as well, but like, who are the three French players you'd be the most worried that if they play well, Ireland are going to have a really tough day? Oh, see, the first two is pretty easy. Like, um, it's Dupont and Intimac. Mm. Especially, I mean, if one of them plays well, like, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. When the two of them play well together, they are because they're, they remind me of like the good old days of O'Gara and Stringer, like, where they were the best half-back pairing in Europe yeah, and they were also like one of the best half-back pairings in the Six Nations yeah. so like they have that like they are like the best half-back pairing in Europe without mm. a doubt and when you have the two of them firing it is frightening because it's two of if not the two most pivotal positions on a pitch yeah. and then number three Penno because he can he can score a try out of absolutely anything from anywhere when he wants yeah. so that is frightening he's a bit like Will Jordan in that way isn't he as well like just like again, as just you saw the like, yeah, yeah. what about you? I had I had I had Dupont Entomac and then I had Aldreed as well, just because he's just just an absolute workhorse. And then again, my guy almost now at this stage is Willemsa as well. I was just kind of thinking mm. if, if he has an influential game. Like we actually saw Ireland at the weekend just dominated the line out there against Wales and Wales yeah. like O'Mahony just was like even under no competition at all. But like if these big guys can kind of like threaten Ireland in, in that line out and like Dan Sheehan can be got at there and if you can put him I under pressure so. as well. Like I think so. what could be could be vital for this year. I know the team hasn't been announced yet, but it looks like Keller is fit. And yes. to have Keller to spring off the bench, mm. people forget like cause he's unf- he's, had a, he's had a bad run of injuries the last whatever it is six twelve months. Like, yeah. You know Keller like was miles ahead of Dan Sheehan there at one stage. It's yeah. just Dan Sheehan took his opportunity with two hands while he was out injured. Mm. Keller is like one still one of the best hookers in the world, and to be able to bring on a Ronan Keller after sixty minutes, yes, yeah, it's yeah. like it's it, it's very similar to what South Africa can do with Malcolm Marks, mm-hmm. and you can see the damage that he can do in twenty to thirty minutes. Yeah, Keller can do the exact same. And that, that the French will be fighting to that, and they should be fighting to that if he's fit yeah. and ready to go. You got me excited there. Now I didn't, I didn't know he's that. Like, yeah, hopefully yeah, he's, he's, he's in he training and he's in the squad and stuff like, and they're hoping he'll be back. Like, but and look, and that's no insult to Rob Herring. Like, I mean, Rob Herring's another great hooker. Like, but I'm sorry, like this is a guy who was in the Lions squad there not too long ago. Yeah, like, yeah. He's, he's a dyna- he's a real dynamic hooker. Like, mm. you know, they're they're almost like carbon coffee each other himself and Dan. Yeah, you know. So it'd be interesting to see, but um. So before we finish up, Pat, we'll have to go for we we'll have to do predictions. Yes, we'll have to do predictions. So we'll kick off so first with the big one. No, we leave the big one to last, right? So we're going first England Italy. Who are you going with? I'm still going to go England, even for all yeah, you talk I up g- for all you talk up like Italy, and this yeah. could be their chance as well. Like it's 
I can still even see them winning by again. Maybe you're you're going on, on past as well. I'm going to go England by like twelve points. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go. I'll say England by around nine points. I don't. I, I think Italy will. It's very hard to see to see what what way it goes. Um, Scotland versus Wales. That's on in Edinburgh, I believe. Yeah, Murrayfield. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with the Scots for this three show. I'm going to go for the Scots by. 10 to 12 points. Wow, okay. That's yeah. a big one, yeah. I think. I, I just, I saw nothing of Wales at the weekend and I saw a lot from Scotland and mm. like when, uh, when Flower Scotland is belted out in, 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 in Murrayfield, like it's a different ball game and I just think they're going to be fired up and ready to go. Uh, do Anne Vernon Murva for another, another two tries? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I, w- I was nearly just, it's for controversy's sake, going to go Wales there like because the Scots have just blown it so many times in the past but like when you think they're going to get some kind of momentum behind them, but um, no, I'm going to go Scotland here. Like maybe just not not by as much. Maybe within six or seven points. Like yeah. Right. Okay. The big one. The big one. Um, Ireland, France. I'm honestly, and I'm not being biased. I am going to go Ireland by six. I think Ireland at home after what we saw from Ireland the weekend, after what we saw from France the weekend, the fact that we're in Dublin. I just I, I know France are unbeaten in over twelve months. Um, I just, I, I can't see past anything other than an Irish win. Yeah, I'd be the same again. Yeah, it's like, I think they were kind of like, I, for me, I was like going into it as well. I was kind of leaning the way yourself and, and even like Lindsay was talking about with the, I thought Wales away was going to be the toughest test for this, these guys. Like mm. they just walked through that, like, you know, and impressed me so much. Like you would have thought that going away to New Zealand and then kind mm. of the way they handled November, would have, they just keep convincing you more and more in every week. So I'm going to go for Ireland as well. Yeah, like, and as well. Um, yeah, I kind of think I think they're going to have too much. But I'm gonna, not too much room, but I'll go four points for Ireland. There you have it, guys. Well, look, I hope you enjoyed the show and enjoy round two of the Six Nations. We'll be back soon. Cheers.